Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Dino. I've had these bottle top heaters for five or six years now, but they're starting to give me problems. So today I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix these and get them back up and running so I can get back out to the shed and get some work done. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something warm to drink and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. Can't wait to get these things running again. I really like my bottle top heaters. Like I say, I've had these for about five years now and they function pretty much flawlessly for the first four seasons. Now last winter, this right hand side started to give me a bit of a problem. I'd light the unit and then as soon as I'd release the safety valve, well, the, the unit would go out. I ended up just sidestepping it by using a clamp to hold that safety button in and it would run okay but every once in a while it would snap off and I'd have to go back and relight it. Now, this season, the right hand side here started to give me some problems. And when I started to do a little bit of reading, initially I thought maybe the thermocouples were, were bad, but I ended up bypassing them and the units worked great. And what it turned out to be was really the anti-tip balls on the back of the unit. Each, each one of these heaters has one and if the unit happens to tip over it'll shut off the flow of gas and of course it'll go out. Now I don't have any children around and unfortunately my dog passed away a few months ago so I don't even have to worry about him. So I'm not too worried about this getting tipped over. So I think what I'll do is actually remove the anti-tip mechanism out of the unit and instead install a couple toggle switches so as I can turn these on or off as I want even if the unit's running. Currently if you want to run a single unit you have to shut the unit off, let the thermocouples cool and then you can come back in and relight a single head. With toggle switches in line I can just flick the toggle switch off, it'll shut that head off and I can just keep on rocking. So. Why don't we get working on that and see if we can't actually um, get this thing going. Okay, let's take a look. What my thought here is, I'm gonna take this piece of aluminum angle that I have and make a little bit of a dashboard that is gonna fit right in behind the heaters. Now on the flat spot here, I'm gonna end up mounting a couple of these little toggles and I'll run the wires in over here to actually um, turn these on or off. Now this is really a bit of an overkill piece, but I have it, it's free, so I'm gonna make it work. Now why don't we take a little bit closer look on how these anti-tip switches here work. When you depress this red button here, it basically allows gas to flow even without the thermocouple working. Now when you light up the heater, it produces heat and in turn the thermocouple produces a small amount of electricity that runs down this wire here. It runs through the anti-tip switch and then from there it runs down to the gas valve located here. Now basically I'm going to bypass this by taking these two leads and connecting them together. And I do that just with a little jumper. Now this tells me that the actual tip switch is bad because when I hook it up like this, the heater functions properly and the thermocouple works. For the bracket, I'm gonna mount it down here and I'm gonna make it about as wide as these two marks and I'll taper it down on these V shapes here. Now, I'll do most of the cutting with my scroll saw. Um, it, aluminum cuts pretty easy even with these wood blades. And then I'll finish it off with a hacksaw where the scroll saw couldn't fit. After that, I'll follow it up on my belt sander and just try to smooth all the edges out and I'll do the rest of the work, the fine detail with a file. Now it's going to mount here and it looks like it's going to fit really well. It's about the right size. Nothing I can, nothing's in the way. I can still get to the switches. So now I'm going to measure the bolt centers on this uh, heater mount here. 
And I'm going to use those. There's enough thread left poking through the actual bracket. I think I can do no problem. So I'll transfer those centers over on a center line that I've marked here. And then I'll use my punch to just sort of set the center of the holes. Once that's done, I'll bring it to my drill press and I'll just drill these holes out. And I'll also mark and drill a couple half inch holes so the toggle switches can pass up through the bottom. And I just basically center these in the middle. And I'll deburr these as well so there's no sharp edges. Finally, I'll take apart the toggle switches and I'll mount them up from underneath. Now these are pretty easy to do. And make sure that I get the on position facing the same direction for both switches and I'll just tighten them down here. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. And I like these little sort of stubby little switches here. They, they feel really good when you move them. I'm going to make a couple little jumpers here to go from the switches to the wires. You can see there's a fork on one end and a glad hand on the other. So I'll strip a little bit of wire here. And uh, I like these type of wire strippers. They're, they're really, really good. And I'll, uh, I'll braid this down. And then I'll find the right connectors here and crimp them onto the wires. Now you want to make sure obviously that these are fastened really, really well. And the one thing is I have to grind the glad hands down because the heater uses a slightly smaller connector and a standard size one won't fit in. So I come in and I just sort of grind the edges of these down a little bit so it'll fit in. It must be some kind of a safety thing. Next I'll just wire them into the switches first and you can see how the little connectors work. And then I will mount the actual dashboard onto the heater itself using these screws that are already here. This was actually the hardest part of the whole job. I probably could have had my wife down here holding the heaters up. It would have made it a lot easier, but basically I just threaded the bolts through and tightened it up. Now I did tighten them up a little bit on one end and then on the other side just so it went in nice and flat, but overall it worked out really, really good. And the last thing I did was just basically connect up the thermocouples through the switches. And the job's just about done once this is completed. All you really need to do is just to test it to make sure everything works right. Mine did. I just basically turn the switches on, hold the red button in, light, and then the thermocouple takes over from there. It's really good. That wraps up today's episode on how I fixed my uh, bottle top sunflower heater. Now again, this is not a recommended uh, modification by any heater manufacturer that I know of, but it does work and it does work for what I want it to do. Now in case you're wondering what one of these uh, sort of anti-tip switches looks like inside, I'll show you right here. So basically there's a large ball that sits on a lever and basically actuates this small micro switch that's down in the bottom. Now I think what happens is that ball kind of gets wedged or the micro switch starts to wear out and eventually that system fails. Now again these are not expensive so if you are at all worried just change out the anti-tip switch and the heaters will be fine. Okay well I hope you enjoyed today's episode it's a bit of a shorter one and I hope to see everybody back here soon at Dino's Tinker Shed. You have yourself a great day.